Hey guys, Dave the Austin Asian here. We're going to do something uh, that I haven't done before, uh, ever, and we are going to build a uh, upper. So most of my ARs, I have um, built the lowers and changed out some parts and stuff, um, but I've never done a complete build. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have to finish out the upper receiver with forward assist, uh, and <clears throat> the dust cover, and then we're going to add the barrel, uh, the rail system, gas tube, gas block, um, and I might be able to put on my muzzle device. I'm not sure if I have a crush washer, so I'll have to double check for that um, in a second. But uh, let's get started. First thing we got to do is we got to get the ejection port cover on. So basically, you got your ejection port cover, this bar, uh, this pin goes over there. You've got your uh, spring and this tiny little um, C washer here. So the easiest thing that I've found is you take some like a needle nose pliers and you just kind of hold it at an angle like that. And then on your little bar here there's a groove if you can see that right here. So you just take this and help get it started on there. careful not to lose this. I'm actually going to put this down just so I don't lose it because it's real small. Okay, once it's kind of started on there, if you can see that, you just got to center it up. done it should look just like this and what this does is this keeps the bar um, from sliding out <clears throat> once your uh, every or once the ejection port covers on now what you want to do from here <clears throat> is take you know your ejection port cover kind of line everything up right in like this you're gonna place place your spring um, down here with the long end facing up and then you're just going to take the end without the washer and slide this into place just so the tip uh, of the bar is uh, just inside of the uh, ejection port cover. So you line all this up, and what you're going to want to do is twist this 180, the long end 180 degrees down, and seat that into uh, the correct position. So, get it in like this. This one gets a little bit tricky because you gotta keep that short end on or lined up correctly. It took me a little bit to get this correct, um, but basically you want the long end on the edge of the ejection port cover and the short end up on the receiver. And then you can give it, you know, make sure it flips down reliably. Um, you don't have to really worry about this popping off because the handguard is going to keep it uh, in place. So this still can move right now, 
but what you're going to end up doing is once you got the barrel on and the hand guards, that's not moving at all. The next thing we got to do is get the forward assist in. Basically, you've got the spring, uh, the actual forward assist, and then just a little roll pin. Um, this is a kind of harder part to do. Um, I don't know about you guys, but roller pins um, always give me a bunch of trouble. So what I have is a punch here, uh, and I'm going to try my best with just a hammer. I don't have any of these freaking um, specialized tools or anything. Uh, these are just some things that I had laying around. So, uh, you know, it's always good to add a little bit of oil, um, especially, you know, if you've got these metal and metal parts. So we'll just oil everything up a little bit so um, everything slides nice and easy, uh, you know, against metal on metal. I also do like to add a little bit of oil or lube onto the uh, roller pin just to get it started a little bit easier. And a trick that I found uh, when I've been doing these is you just take a, some needle nose pliers and then um, you know you just kind of pinch one end uh, so you get a little bit of a taper to help get it started. So um, I've done that. I don't think you guys would be able to see um, on the video, but. It is slightly pinched on this end, so I'm going to have that one going down. But basically, it's pretty straightforward. You just take your um, spring, slide it into place. Uh, you know, you can make sure um, there's not like an indexing or either end. It doesn't really matter. You just put that on there. Uh, what does matter, though, is you want this little, um, this kind of tapered claw end um, facing toward the bolt carrier group. Because what that's going to do is it's that's what's going to uh, ratchet onto these, um, you know, kind of ridges cut into the bolt carry group. So, what I have found is um, a little bit easier to do is to actually start the uh, roller pin, you know, going in with a hammer before you start um, placing stuff into place. So. You guys can use tape or whatever to try and not mark up your receiver. Um, I'm not too worried about this. Uh, it's probably going to get Cerakoted here um, relatively soon anyway. So um, essentially, you'll just put this in. Make sure that's toward uh, where the bolt carrier group would be. Slide that into place. Depress it while you're um, starting to hammer down on the uh, roller pin. Took me a little bit to get that in. Um, I miss hit a few times, so there's a couple little scratches and dings and stuff. Um, that is not a big deal for me, as far as I'm concerned, but it works. And if you can see in there, you'll see that claw pop out, and that's going to index perfectly with the bolt carrier group. Next thing you want to do is you want to get the barrel and index it with the upper receiver. Um, there's a little notch at the top that will slide right in. Um, I didn't videotape that part because uh, with the upper receiver I have, this is a BCM, they're made to be like super tight um, and I had to use a heat gun and call a buddy over to help me uh, seat the barrel in there properly. But uh, it's indexed there uh, with the notch on the top. So you're going to take your barrel nut now and just get this hand tight. So you just snug that up with your hand, and then um, at least the BCM, and I know a lot of, a lot of other uh, companies and stuff come with these barrel nut wrenches. Um, essentially what you'll do is you'll put it in a vise uh, and use a torque wrench. You'll twist. Um, the BCM specs are, I believe, 45 pounds. Um, let me double check here. Uh, but I'll get back to you once this is all torqued up and installed correctly, okay? Um, but basically, yep, you'll... you'll torque it to uh, kind of the minimal spec, you'll back it off and then retorque it to um, that's that same uh, specification or sometimes you can go a little bit higher too. Um, not much like another five to ten foot pounds. Okay I got my barrel nut on, um, that's torqued down to specification. Uh, didn't 
take too long to do. Uh, you just got to clamp it up, make sure it's all seated nice and tight. So the next thing you want to do here is you got your gas tube and gas block, um, and then a little roller pin too. So. Uh, if you guys are curious, I've got a BCM upper receiver, uh, Roscoe barrel or Roscoe manufacturing 16-inch uh, barrel, uh, Daniel Defense uh, gas tube, and a BCM uh, gas block. So what you'll do is you'll take the end that has uh, the downward-facing hole and the cross pin, and uh, you'll stick that into your um, gas block here and then you'll want to line up so you can see through um, and then what you'll need to do, this is another roller pin, uh, you'll have to set that in place uh, before you um, put it over the barrel and on the uh, firearm. Okay, once you got that roller pin through, um, your gas block is pretty much ready to install. So what you'll do is you'll take, um, put the block over the tip of the barrel and then make sure the gas tube lines up with the hole in the top of the receiver. Kind of work that back um, until it's about centered. And then you'll notice on the bottom of the barrel there are uh, some, most of the time there's usually uh, a detent or, or, a, or a little dent or two um, that will line up with um, either center dot or uh, you know, the little pins or screws or however your gas block attaches. Now this one just uses two set screws. So we'll tighten these down. There we go. So what we got to do now is install our handguard and we should be ready to go. All right, the last thing we're going to do here is we are going to install the MCMR from BCM. Basically what you'll do is you'll take this little tab right here and push that right so the two little uh, wings are um, facing the back of the receiver just like that. And then what you're going to have to do is slide on your handguards for the rail system. Um, and then BCM does recommend you heat it up. So essentially you just push this back and then we'll put some screws in uh, after I get the handguard seated correctly. Okay, so I got it all on there, um, got it all torqued up, handguard fit on uh, perfectly. The last thing we got to do is put uh, these bolts in that just kind of hold it into uh, or attach it to the barrel nut and then uh, we should be all set. So I'll show you guys what it looks like in just a second. So that is pretty much how you build uh, an AR-15 upper. This one I ran into a couple hiccups with, you know, like I said, getting everything torqued down right and getting it all fitted um, correctly. It took me a couple tries. Um, overall, I really didn't damage the finish too much, if you can see. Um, right back there with the forward assist, uh, I, I marred up the receiver just a tad. Um, but past that, it works. Uh, it, it seems like it works. I haven't... Uh, test fired it yet, but, you know, everything's going right. So it seems like it's fu functioning. Um, it feels really good in my hands. Uh, you know, this is a 16-inch barrel. I've got the BCM, MCMR on there. Um, I've got BCM, um, I think this is the B5 stock, BCM upper, arrow precision lower, and then a Magpul K2 plus grip. Past that, I've, got a, I've still got to add a, an optic, some backup sights, and then uh, go sight it in. So if you guys thought this video was cool or helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.